Hello, today I'm going to be speaking, teaching and preaching on prosperity. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father, come with the day today, Lord Jesus, to speak your word, Father, to teach your word, Father, to open the hearts and the eyes of the people, that they may truly understand what prosperity is, not by the world's terms, not by their own terms, but by your terms, God. Help us all, oh Father, to live a prosperous and fulfilling life, oh God, that brings glory to you for now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So, what does prosperity mean? Prosperity can can mean many different things. It means many different things for many different people. For some, prosperity is having lots of money. For others, it's having a nice family. But the actual definition means the condition of being successful or thriving. From the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. The condition of being successful and thriving. So being prosperous means having the condition to be successful and to thrive. Now, for some, that condition may be different, as I said earlier. For some, that condition may be having lots of money. For others, that condition may be having a nice family, a lovely wife, a lovely husband, a lovely children, having loads of having loads of houses, maybe having loads of cars, maybe being able to get whatever you want to get. But to me, and to God, prosperity, being truly successful, is when you are able to obey Jesus' last commandment to the fullest. And his last commandment to the fullest is to go out to all the world and preach the goodness of the gospel. As a Christian, what we are meant to do is spread the good news, the gospel, which means good news, to others, so that they too may receive the good news. The souls that we bring into the kingdom shows that, as a Christian, is the condition of prosperity, the condition of being successful or thriving in our Christianity. That, that is the condition. The condition is not having lots of money. The condition is not having lots of cars, a nice wife, a nice husband, a nice family, a nice sofa, or this or that, whatever. The condition is because of the Great Commission. I'll repeat this again. The condition is because of the Great Commission. And what is that commission? To go out to all the world and preach the goodness of the gospel. It says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. So yes, the condition of prosperity in Christianity is bringing souls to the kingdom. But that prosperity and favour also leaks out into other aspects of your life. Meaning, God does not want you to just live a poor life. God does not want you to live a life of struggle and of pain. No, yes, there may be trials in order to test your character, to bring you up to newer levels. But God doesn't want his children, the children of his kingdom, the ones that created the heavens and the earth, the one that laid the foundation all over this earth, the rivers, the seas. He does not want for us to struggle on the earth that he created. It's like the king of England, the king of England's children, suffering, living on the street, being homeless in their own kingdom, per se. Or the prime minister's children living on the street in their own kingdom or country that they're running. It would be weird. It would be, it would be main headline news because it would be weird. It's not natural. And it's the same with God. It's not natural for us Christians to be living at the lowest of the lowest in the kingdom that he created the earth that he formed he has plans for us as it says in jeremiah 29 verse 11 he sa- it says he is he has plans for you if i know the plans i have for you says the lord 
plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has plans for our future and hope. So whatever situation you may be in, our, in now as a Christian, if it's, it is not the end. God has a plan for you to go up. God does not want you to stay in the place that you are. And it says in Philippians 4 verse 19, it says, And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Because you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because you're through the salvation that Jesus has brought us. He shall supply all your needs. You will not go without food. You will not go without money. I don't know who needs to hear this today. But you will not go without money. You will not go without food. You will never ever be in lack because of the salvation of Jesus Christ. You are a child of his kingdom. So you shall not go without. You live in the place that God created. So you should not live without. Just because the season you're in now, you may be in lack, you may be in debt, you may be without food, you may be without even the basic necessities. I'm telling you now that it's not the end. God has a plan for you. Most times, the preachings are to correct. But this is to teach, and not just to teach, but to encourage. The specific message is to encourage you to keep on walking. Keep on the straight and narrow path. God will provide because God has a future for you. Yes, he has a future for you. A future for me. A future for all of us listening to this message. A future in which there's no lack, no debt, no poverty. As Christians, we are the salt of the earth. We are meant to bring light. We're like mini lamps reflecting of the sun. Or should I say like windows reflecting the light into the room. And that's the light of God. And so ones that are allowing the light to come through, will they not have the light themselves? The window does not become dark because it shines the light through into the room. And so, if the window shines the light through the room, how can it be without heat? Because light produces heat. And so, if the light shines through the window, how can the window be without heat? How can the window be without light? And so, it's the same with you. How can you be without goodness, joy, peace, faithfulness, prosperity, if that's what God says that you have. He says that he has plans for you. The future and hope. And so in so. And that means that you will have power. You will have finance. You will be debt free. You will be in good health. You will have favour and mercy upon you and your entire family. Not because of what you've done. Not because the world has allowed it for you. Or the opportunities have just flown in. But because of God. That God has brought it to you. This is why when I say that prosperity is not something that we're just meant to look up to different billionaires and wish we had what they have. God does not want us to be covetous or envious. But what God wants us. Is to understand that we too can live in that same prosperity. But we can live it even better. And even better is through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. And through his salvation. The prosperity, as I said, for different people may mean different things. May mean money. May mean family. But for God... Prosperity, the condition of success of your life is the sharing of the good news of the good news. Why did Jesus say, go out to all the world and preach the good news of the gospel as his last commandment? 
as the last thing he said before he ascended up into heaven and into the clouds. Because that is the condition in which we are successful or have success or are thriving. What is some people may be wondering? What is salvation? What do you mean by salvation through Jesus Christ? Jesus died on the cross for you and I. And he rose again on the third day. He took all the sins of mankind from the beginning, from whatever BC, all the way to 2024 AD. And even further, to however long this earth lasts, to however long humans are on this earth, whatever AD it may be, he has forgiven. And he took upon all those sins and died on the cross as a sacrifice. He took your punishment, for it says in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. He took that wage. And death, in that context, does not mean death is in dying because we all still have to die. But that death means eternal separation from God. That is the same death that Adam and Eve faced in the beginning. If you read Genesis, I would encourage you to read that first. That same death, Jesus took the punishment. But he rose again on the third day. Took the keys back from Satan, hell and the grave. And now we too... He is that bridge. He is that connection that now we can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for favour and mercy in our times of need. And so if you'd like to accept this free gift that Jesus Christ has given for you, that he's given his life for you, I'd just like you to repeat this prayer after me. Say with me now, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, forgive me. And I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen in heaven. Amen. You're that like one of sheep that is now be found. The one of coin that is now be found. Your name is written to the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen in heaven. Amen. I recommend you reading the book of John. It's such an amazing book for the born and become believers. I also recommend you going to a good church in your area to build your foundation and build your right foundation. Always check what everything and everyone says that lines up with the Word of God. The Word, the Bible, is your manual, it's your line, it's your ruler. If it's not straight as the Bible, then it doesn't count. Read what the Bible says, ask God for understanding and interpretation and build your foundation in Jesus Christ. I also recommend you reading one of the previous few messages which I spoke upon foundation. I believe if you scroll down a bit, you'll see it. And so that you may understand how to build your foundation as a Christian. And what I want to do from this Friday, because it's a Friday today, to next Friday, well, actually, no, to say to next Tuesday, because that's when I'll upload next, by God's grace, to next Tuesday, is to just understand, look around, and ask God to you, to ask God, what does prosperity mean to me? And what does it mean to you? Because when you ask that, you can see the differences, and then align your plan with his plan. And when you see the condition of pros- the condition of success and thriving in your life, that God wants in your life, then you can start moving towards that purpose, that future, that hope, and that goal that God has in mind for your life. This has been Prosperity. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed week.